This is EHJ today at the Cardiology Update 2015 in Davos, and I have the pleasure to talk to uh, Professor Salem Yusuf from Hamilton, Ontario. Welcome, Salem. Thank you, Tom. So we're going to talk about uh, salt, the essence of life, the ingredient of life. Uh, uh, why is salt so important? Well, salt has been part of human history for well over 8,000 years. Mm -hmm. it, it was considered a key product. Uh, it was given as part of the salaries by the Romans. Yes. It played a major role in various political um, uh, sort of agitations like the Salt March in India, led by Gandhi. Uh, and when we think of physiology, um, salt, sodium, is a key part of physiology. Uh, it's a key part of the action potential. Every cell needs salt, so at least sodium. So. Um, the issue that has arisen in the last 15, 20 years is whether too much salt is bad for you, and if so, what is the right level of salt? The modern day story starts largely with two studies published in the BMJ in 1988, the Scottish Heart Study, that showed salt was not associated with blood pressure. And the Intersalt Study, published in the same issue, that claimed that there was a weak association between sodium and blood pressure. But this was entirely driven by four primitive societies in, uh, in, the deep, uh, in deep Amazonia, Brazilian societies. They have very, very low, Th sodium, very low intake. sodium intake. So that's how, how the hypothesis started a bit, that's because a, they have no yeah. hypertension and very low sodium intake. Well, the key is first is hard to estimate sodium intake in hunter-gatherers. You yes. can't get complete yes. measurements. So when you actually look at the data in the, uh, in the Intersol paper, it suggests that sodium intake wasn't accurately measured. The second is these people have extremely short longevity. You know, the mean, median survival is 30 to 35 years. Yes. So, you know, how, how useful it is to um, extrapolate from these populations to the rest of the world is hard. N and anyway, nobody's going to advocate that people in Switzerland or Canada all of a sudden go and live the life of a tribal right. in, uh, in, in Amazon. But there was another end, uh, the Japanese, particularly the Northern Japanese, they have a high intake of right. sodium, they have also high intake, yep. a high uh, incidence There's of no stroke. That in Finland, in parts of China, mm -hmm. and parts of Japan, there were very high levels. So the issue is not whether high levels are bad for you, the issue is how low to go. And the, uh, there's also no doubt that lowering sodium reduces blood pressure, but blood pressure is only one marker, yes. okay? But if sodium is reduced to below three grams of sodium a day, you get marked activation of the renin angiotensin system. And how much would that be for the average well, physician? What, uh, what is three grams roughly? Three grams is about one and a bit of a teaspoon. Uh, and three grams of sodium is about seven, eight grams of uh, of salt. Mm -hmm. So somewhere between three and five grams is probably a physiological level. Somehow, for some reason, based on the blood pressure lowering uh, results only, and these were short-term trials for a month where the entire food was replaced, which doesn't happen in free living people, um, you know, various uh, uh, bodies started to recommend pushing sodium down to one below 1 1.5 or below 2.3. And in our pure study done in, 20, in 18 countries, 100,000 people, practically nobody was consuming sodium below 1.5 grams. So we don't really know. So, we don't really know, you know, so that, that, that seems to be a leap too far. And also 2.3 grams, only 0.2%. So again, we don't really know. Yeah, so what did you find in the pure study? The pure study, we found that first for blood pressure, uh, once, uh, you know, over six grams, the increase in blood pressure for every gram was about three millimeters systolic. Between three and six, it was only one and a half. And below three, it was very little, 0.6 or 0.7, and it was not statistically significant. So even for blood pressure, it doesn't make a whole lot of sense. Is there a difference between those who have high blood pressure versus normal yeah. blood pressure? Uh, the impact of sodium lowering is much more marked in people with high blood pressure, but 
four times greater than people who are normal blood pressure. But essentially we're interested not in blood pressure, exactly. but we are interested in how well we're doing. So, so the ultimate thing is to, because you know, lowering the blood pressure and lowering the sodium activates the renin angiotensin system. And we don't really know how the two balance out. The best way is to look at clinical data. And epidemiological studies suggest a J-shaped curve that below about three grams of sodium a day, mortality and cardiovascular disease rates go up. And over about six grams a day, it goes up too. So it looks like the sweet spot is between three and six grams. And that's what the majority eats in, in our society? That's what the majority in Western societies eat. There are some societies like Northeast China, mm -hmm. Inner Mongolia, Central Asia, uh, previously in Japan, previously in Finland, where people took more. Because they used it to conserve food, huh? Maybe to, to preserve food, it's possible, but it's also a taste, like yeah, in yeah. Japan and in China, soy sauce. Yes. Uh, and, and uh, you know, you have cultural and traditional ways. So if people's sodium intake is high or their blood pressure is high, it makes sense to reduce it. But certainly it doesn't make any sense to reduce it below three because there is a risk of increased mortality. Right. Yeah. But I, I remember also in this Belgium study, they had an effect on blood pressure, but not on events, which, was, exactly. which was a bit uh, surprising. Several studies have shown yeah. that. Yeah. And uh, so I think we, we can't automatically call, assume if blood pressure comes down, uh, events, the events will, will come, come down. down. Yeah. The, the number of randomized trials have been very few, but the totality of the randomized trials does not indicate a clear benefit on clinical events. So should we do a randomized trial? Well, I believe we should. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, if people want to advocate extremely low sodium reduction, we should do a randomized trial. The problem is feasibility. I, you know, given that practically yes. nobody takes very low sodium, yes. how do you get people to remain on low sodium for years? Right. So that's going to be a challenge. But on the other hand, if you can't do it in a trial, how can you do it in public no. health? And it's useless anyway. It's like useless anyway. Mm -hmm. Now, the, so I think a randomized trial is needed. Many people are calling for it. And you know, if it shows benefit at very low sodium, then we should consider it. Why is there so much emotion in the SALT debate? I don't fully understand that. I think it has to do with the fact that a few people have made their entire careers around it and nothing else. If you had something else, if something doesn't work, you walk away from it. That's yeah. right. Like you and I have yeah. had many disappointing right, results in, in our results and yeah. we just go on. Yeah, yeah. So that is one. The second part of it is it's almost become a religion mm -hmm. for a lot of people. Mm -hmm. And um, it's an unthinking myth that they want to pursue. Mm -hmm. Third is they have this feeling that by doing a population strategy, it is cost effective. Well, if it's ineffective, it, it is, but otherwise it's not. If it's ineffective, yeah. you know, who, uh, no matter what the cost, it's not worth doing. So what would we be your recommendation for a, for a practicing physician I, at this point? For the practicing physician in hypertensive, I would say, or somebody with high risk of cardiovascular disease, I'd say recommend lowering sodium moderately to about three grams to four grams a day. The other people, I'd say, if your sodium is over six grams a day, lower it to between three and five grams a day. But I don't see any evidence to suggest going below three grams of sodium a day. But what do you tell your patient? You tell them not to put salt on, on the food? Uh, what I tell my patients is, uh, you know, uh, be careful how much salt you eat, yes. but I don't, give them a target of salt because yeah. you know that's highly controversial and certainly even though the evidence that heart failure isn't clear i advise them not to consume too much salt so it's it's not saying reduce it too low i'm saying avoid high right you see what i mean right so uh, i think it's a matter of moderation so the truth is between the extremes as you exactly said. the truth is between two extremes thank you very much salim thank it was you. a pleasure